What is up, YouTube? Have you heard of the Affinity Suite but wondered what it was? Well, that is what we are here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator who teaches creative programs online. And today we're going to be talking all about what the Affinity Suite is and why it might be useful to you. This has been coming up a lot recently because Affinity V2 was just recently released and so a lot of people are hearing about and coming to the Affinity programs for the first time. I've broken this video up into three parts. The first part is going to be all about what apps are actually found inside of the Affinity Suite. And the second part is going to be about what you can actually create using these affinity programs. The third part is going to be all about what the cost of these programs is because I understand that that is important to a lot of you. And then at the end, we'll do a very special bonus segment, which will tell you what really, really brings the value with these affinity programs. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Okay, first off, let's talk about what's in the Affinity Suite. The Affinity Suite is a group of design and graphic apps. There are three apps in this suite. There is Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, and Affinity Publisher. Now, these three apps constitute what many designers would consider the holy trinity of app categories. Affinity Photo is a raster-based editor, so it's good for working with pixel-based images like photos. Affinity Designer is a vector-based editor, so it's good for working on things like logos and icons that are going to need to scale up and scale down and aren't coming from a camera. And then Affinity Publisher is where it all comes together. Affinity Publisher is what we call a desktop publishing app or what I sometimes refer to as a layout designer. This is good for things like books, magazines, posters, anything that might be printed or shown online. If you're wondering how these programs compare to other programs on the market, Affinity Photo is a direct competitor to Adobe Photoshop. Affinity Designer is a direct competitor to Adobe Illustrator. And Affinity Publisher is a direct competitor to Adobe InDesign. Now, the reason this is a suite of apps is because all three of these types of programs are often needed by designers in a variety of fields. And so you don't want to get stuck using just one thing. Like a lot of people will get stuck using a raster editor for things that they should really be using a vector editor for. So you really want the entire suite so that you can do everything you need to do. Now, one of the wonderful things about this suite of apps is that it's available on three platforms. It's available on Windows, it's available on Mac, but it's also available and fully functional on iPad. And so that is one of the really, really special things about these programs. Let's get into more about what these programs can do because I know that confuses a lot of people. Like I said, you wanna make sure you use the right program for the right job. These apps are extremely powerful and they're usable by professionals, hobbyists, and students alike. So let's dive in and talk about what each of them really can do. So Affinity Photo, like I mentioned before, this is the raster-based editor in the suite. It is for working with pixel-based images. So think of this as anything that might be coming out of a camera. So if you take your camera and you take a picture, that's going to be preserved as pixels. That's the way the data will be preserved, pixels in specific colors. And that's where Affinity Photo really shines at working. This is a program where you can do adjustment layers and masks so that you can really do intense edits to your photos, but also it's a place where you can do photo compositions, things like mashing multiple photos together. A good example of something like this might be like a movie poster where you have multiple characters appearing on the poster, but obviously those characters aren't coming from the same original image. Another place where Affinity Photo comes in as a raster editor is working with brushes. Brushes tend to have a lot of texture to them and that tends to lend itself better to raster than to vector. So a lot of digital artwork, things like illustrations and digital paintings and things like that will be done in a raster based program like Affinity Photo. So this is a great place to do that. There's lots of different brushes available so that you can get all kinds of different looks. Another place where this is very helpful is anything that's going to be a design document, but really be relying on the photo as the focus point. These would be things like a wedding announcement or a graduation announcement where the focus is really on that photo. So you really wanna be able to manipulate and edit that, but you're also going to be able to need to add in some graphical elements and text. A photo is a great option for things like that. All right, up next we have Affinity Designer. This is going to be what you're using if you're doing traditional graphic design type work. These would be things like logos or icons or even things that are a little bit more intense like infographics where you need to be able to present data in a graphical form. This is also a great place to do things like pattern designs because you're going to want to be able to scale those up and down and vector-based artwork can be infinitely scaled because it's based on math, not on pixels. And of course, this is where you could also do things like create posts for your social media followers and it's also a good spot to do things like wireframing 
or UI mockups for those of you who might be doing some kind of interface design for the web or mobile. There's obviously lots of other things that could be done in these programs. This is just kind of a brief snapshot of the kinds of things that can be done. Last up, we have Affinity Publisher, our desktop publishing app. I really like to think of desktop publishing apps as the place where things from the other apps come together in a final form. So for example, you might do something like lay out a magazine here. In that magazine, you might use text that you bring in from a program like Microsoft Word, and then you might also use photos that you bring in from a program like Affinity Photo, and you might also have a logo or an icon that you're bringing in from a program like Affinity Designer to create the finished laid out product. So this is really good for all kinds of documents, be that books, reports, magazines, newspapers, you can do all that kind of work. It can also be great for smaller documents as well. Things like flyers or brochures or even business cards are a really good thing to design here. Someplace where you're going to be working with text and graphics quite a bit and bringing them together into a final form that will eventually be printed or displayed on the screen. And that's what makes Affinity Publisher so powerful. It's where it all starts coming together. Now, before we move on, I think it's good to mention here a little bit about what the Affinity programs cannot do as well. Because they're aimed at graphics, there are a lot of other creative pursuits that they just can't work on. So you're not going to be editing any videos here. You're not going to be doing any animations here, and you're not going to be doing any audio editing here. And while you can do some user interface design here, you're not going to be doing any user interface design with interactions like you might in a program like Figma. The other thing that you can't do is batch photo editing like you could in a program like Lightroom. So you can't take a bunch of raw photos, edit one of them, and then paste those edits across all of them. So it's not good for that kind of photography workflow. So I think it's just good to mention those so that you're fully aware of what you're getting into when you get the Affinity Suite. Now, before we move on to price, I just want to take a moment to remind you, if you're just getting into the Affinity programs and you feel like there's a bit of a learning curve for you, I've got you covered. I've got courses on all of these programs that are linked down in the description below. This even includes the newest program, Affinity Publisher for iPad, which has my new course, an intro to Affinity Publisher for iPad, making a mood board. So make sure that you check that out. And remember, if you do take that new intro course and you choose to take it on Gumroad, you can use the code YT50 to get it for just $15. Okay, now let's talk about the price of the Affinity programs because this is one of the main selling points for it. Because Affinity programs are always sold on a single purchase license and not a subscription model like Adobe, which means that if you pay for it once, you have it. Now, if a new version comes out like version two just did, you can choose whether you want to pay again to upgrade to that new version or you can stay with the program that you already have. You don't need to pay in perpetuity like you do with a subscription license. One of the things people often wonder is how long is there in between version releases? And it's hard to say because we've only gone from V1 to V2, but V1 to V2 had a good seven years from the time the first app was released, Affinity Designer, until V2 was released. So there's no guarantee it will be that long, but I would expect we're on V2 for another five years or so. So you might be thinking with license like that, that they might be quite expensive, but they're actually not. There are two ways to purchase the Affinity programs. The first one is to buy a single app for a single platform. So for example, you might buy Affinity Photo for the Windows platform, and then you have that program. And you can purchase each app separately for each platform. The other way to do it is to purchase what's called the universal license. This is all the apps for all the platforms for one steeply discounted price. And if you're going to use all three apps on any platform or multiple platforms, it is the best way to go. So let's run through this pricing really quickly. There is a sale going on right now for the launch of V2 that will go through at least January 25th, 2023. So I'll give you both the normal price and the sale price. First up, we have the single purchase license on a desktop platform. So those apps are normally $70. On sale, they are currently $41. That is one app to one desktop platform. Now, if you're buying a single app on the iPad, those are going to run you normally $20, but right now they're just $12. And then we have the universal license, all apps on all platforms. This is normally going to run you $170, but currently on sale, it runs you just $100. So very good prices on these, very affordable, especially when you compare it to other programs like Adobe, where you're into a subscription model for about $54 a month. Now it's time for the super secret bonus part of this video. This is where we're going to talk about what makes Affinity so special because at this point you might be thinking, well, that sounds interesting. It sounds like a good price, but what makes it really special? And what makes it so special is that all of these programs work seamlessly together. They all use the same file type. So a file from Affinity Photo can be opened up in Affinity Publisher with no problem, no loss of data, no incompatible features. 
It's really, really great that way. And what takes this even to the next level is a feature in Affinity Publisher called Studio Link. Studio Link allows you to use the features of Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer inside of Affinity Publisher, provided, of course, you own those other programs. So if you want to work on a photo while you're working on your magazine, you don't have to round trip that photo back through Affinity Photo the way you would if you were using Photoshop. All you have to do is switch over to the photo persona and you can edit it right there in the app. And this really changes everything for me. I work almost exclusively in Affinity Publisher now because it's so easy to have access to all of my tools all in one place. And that really is the secret sauce of Affinity. Everything working together all the time with no problems. All right, I hope this video has cleared up some of the confusion around the Affinity Suite. I know I haven't answered all of your questions, so go ahead and leave the questions you still have in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer those. Remember, if you do want to learn more about these, check out my courses linked in the description. We'll chat in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.